Hello, my name is Dave Stukas. I'm a pediatric allergist and I work at Nationwide Children's Hospital and The Ohio State University College of Medicine in Columbus, Ohio. I'm going to speak with you about non-validated food allergy testing. When somebody has a food allergy, their body forms an IgE allergy response. IgE is the allergy antibody, and when this is formed and it attaches to the allergy cells in the body, when that person encounters their food allergen, typically by eating it, it binds to the IgE and unlocks those allergy cells, which release chemicals, mostly histamine, that cause symptoms that are classic for a food allergy reaction. Food allergy reactions do not come and go over time. If somebody is allergic to a food, every time they ingest that food, no matter what form, such as if they're allergic to cow's milk, they cannot consume cheese or ice cream or yogurt. When they encounter the food, they have an allergic reaction, typically within a few minutes and rarely longer than one to two hours later. The typical symptoms of a food allergy reaction include things such as itching, hives or skin rash, can have swelling, vomiting or upset stomach, wheezing, difficulty breathing, or anaphylaxis. So when somebody has a clinical history that's concerning for a food allergy, we can perform IgE testing. There are two different ways that we can detect IgE towards food. One is in the office setting, and it's through a skin prick or scratch test, where a drop of the liquid allergen is placed on the skin, typically on the back or the forearm, and then the skin is gently scratched so that allergen is introduced to those allergy cells in the top layer of the skin. If that person has food-specific IgE towards that allergen attached to those allergy cells, within about 10 or 15 minutes, they will release histamine, causing a localized hive. You get a bump with some redness and itching. The size of that bump tells us the likelihood that that person has an allergy. You can also do food-specific blood testing, where you can measure levels of IgE towards any food in the blood. And the scale comes from basically 0 to 100. The higher the level indicates, the more likely that a food allergy is present. Neither skin prick nor blood ID test can determine the severity of a reaction. It can only be used to interpret the clinical history and determine if a food allergy is present. So those are the validated ways that we can determine if somebody has IgE causing a food allergy. However, there are many different types of unvalidated and unproven food allergy tests that are being marketed. These tests often lack any plausible biochemical mechanism and have no evidence, especially through the standard peer-reviewed trials, that demonstrate that they can, one, actually detect or determine if somebody has a food allergy, or two, anything such as a false positive rate or false negative rate. These types of tests vary from applied kinesiology or muscle testing, where somebody is told to hold a vial of something and their muscle strength is tested both before holding it and then after holding it. If their strength is subjectively determined to be different, then they are diagnosed as having a food allergy. There are people that will offer hair analysis or urine analysis, uh, things that traditionally can be used to measure things such as metal toxicities, but have no business determining whether somebody has a food allergy. There are other tests that are given fancy names where they take somebody's blood and they mix it with an allergen and look at it under a microscope, and if any changes are detected, then they're diagnosed as having a food allergy. And then lastly, there's tests such as IgG testing, which is offered, but IgG testing is a memory antibody, and this merely determines whether somebody has been exposed to a food, not whether they have an allergy. So long story short, it's really important to understand if somebody's concerned about having a food allergy, one, what are the symptoms that occur whenever that food is eaten? If somebody's eating a food, Without any problems when they eat that food, they don't have a food allergy. You can't fool the immune system. Number two, if there is concern for a food allergy, then it's really important to talk with one's personal physician or have a referral to an allergist, especially a board-certified allergist who can determine through proper validated testing whether or not they have a food allergy. And three, it's really important that people not self-diagnose or turn to the internet or have mail-order testing or alternative providers do unvalidated testing in diagnosing food allergy because unfortunately many people are overdiagnosed, misdiagnosed as having a food allergy which leads to unnecessary avoidance, changes in their diet, and overall poor health. For more information on this subject please visit the Academy website at www.aaaai.org.